my computer is my word processor, Microsoft Word. Now I've got the Office 2007 version running under Vista here. And we all use word processors a lot. But very few of us ever really look into the tools that the engineers spend their lives building into the software. We type, we spell check, we print and email with nary a thought as to the huge amount of power built into these applications. We're oblivious to the benefits that we could incur if only we took a bit of time and learned a few of the features. Well, today, I'm going to show you a few of those features. Perhaps you know some of them already, but I'm willing to bet that you don't. And let's begin with typos. We all make consistent typos and some are universal. For example, the word the. Instead of typing T-H-E, we often, because of the speed of typing, hit T-E-H. That's a universal thing we all do and then we have to go through and correct. Watch what happens in Word if you do that typo. I'm going to type in the letters T-E-H and Word automatically recognizes that I have a typo there and it corrects it to the word the. That's a feature called autocorrect. And Word has a dictionary of dozens of common typos that people make that it will automatically correct for. But we all type in our own unique style. I always make one mistake over and over again. I hit the semicolon instead of the apostrophe when I'm typing won't and can't and don't. So typically speaking, I have to go back and correct each one of those whenever I type, especially if I'm typing fast. But let me show you what happens when I type in the word don't, because I've used autocorrect to fix my own shortcomings in typing. I hit the I hit the semicolon T and it automatically corrects to apostrophe T. Now how I made that happen is I went, when I went through and spell checked, I chose the word won't and instead of choosing the correct spelling here at the top, I went to autocorrect and said this is a consistent mistake I always make and whenever I make this mistake, I want to put in this word and then at that point there, this word is added to that dictionary and every time I make that mistake in the future, Word will convert it over. It makes me a more efficient typist. It doesn't make me a better typist, but I have to spend less time correcting because my common mistakes, I don't have to go back and fix every time. The other thing that we always do is we often hit that caps lock key when, we don't, when we're not thinking about it and then we end up getting whole paragraphs or sentences that look like this. And what most of us do when we have all the wrong case is we backspace and then retype the sentence. You don't have to do that. Instead, you just highlight the text and then there's a tool here to convert case in the menu bar. You choose, click on change case and it actually gives you options to change to sentence case, which will capitalize the first letter, to change everything to lowercase or to uppercase to convert it all, or this is the most useful toggle case because when you've accidentally hit the caps lock, every time you hit the shift key to capitalize the letter, it puts it lowercase and that's why you get this kind of thing that looks like a ransom note. So instead we just click toggle case and it automatically cleans it up for us. That is a huge time saver. Next one I want to show you is a formatting tool. As we work on documents, especially if we've got lots of different sections within the document, quite often we'll spend a lot of time formatting it so it looks better. So we go in and we choose a different font to start things off to, for, our, for our header, and then we choose a different size, make it a little bit bigger so it stands out, and choose a color so that it really, really, really stands out, and then adjust the alignment. So basically, we do a whole bunch of different formatting to that one header. But then what happens is we go to the next place that we need that same formatting and we go through the same process again of choosing all of those different menus. There's a much easier way of doing that. We simply click our mouse in the paragraph with the formatting that we want and then here we have something called the Format Painter tool. We click on that and then paint that format to the area that we want it replicated and it's that easy for us to duplicate formatting through our document giving it a much more consistent and appealing look. Last thing I want to show you is using bullets. Now we quite often insert bullets for numbering and for creating order and structure and people quite often will actually number each thing themselves as they go through and then they go back and forth because they spend so much time looking at the numbers of the bullets and less time concentrating on the content. Just write everything out that you have to write out with carriage returns between or with returns between and then once you're finished, highlight the things that you want to add bullets to and then use the menu at the top to either put in plain bullets, put in numbered bullets, put in cascading bullets, however you want, you can adjust it. And you don't have to leave it just the way it is. You can choose, say, regular bullets. You can even modify it and choose some nice different graphical bullets like, say, maybe check marks for the bullet points. So you can modify the document that way as well. Your word processor is more than just a glorified typewriter. If you're going to use a powerhouse application like Microsoft Word, investing some time getting to know a few more of the tools will pay you back in some nice dividends. You're going to work smarter, you're going to work faster, and perhaps your writing will even be better. 
I see the same thing happening over and over in the world of technology, where people simply don't take the time and pay attention to the capabilities of their hardware and their software. That's one thing I like about the Alienware model, the fact that you end up really thinking about the components that work best for you. And the fact that you have instant feedback as to the cost of adding any additional capabilities, that means that as a result, you end up not spending money on features that you don't even know are in your system. And you make sure you have and use the features that are important to you. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time here on Dotto Tech.